Hey, everybody, and welcome to Virtual TrekCon. We've got Mr. Sirac Lofton and Melissa Longo, of course. And right now, we are joined by two incredible actors that played Klingons in Star Trek Discovery, Mary Chifo and Kenneth Mitchell. How are you guys doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Round of applause. Uh, so first things first, thank you so much for joining us. This is really cool. And we're giving people a reason to stay home, watch something, relax, sip a cool beverage, whether it's lemonade or Mike's hard lemonade <laughs> or strawberry lemonade. Those are the only kind of drinks there are, right? Just three. Um, First things first, though, <laughs> after that, Mary Chifo, tell us about your shirt. Oh, yes. So I'm wearing <laughs> I'm and I have my Batless necklace by Make It So. Um, and uh, but the time shirt is from uh, the cruise this year. Um, I got to wear I was part of the time group. I was in the in crowd with Ken and his buddies when we had the epic um, uh, rave Klingon villains rave um which was just one of the most amazing nights ever and particularly now that we are not uh, able to be in any sort of contact <laughs> with each other um but it was a really magical <laughs> night where we really celebrated and literally lifted ken up and it was amazing and yes. uh, i thought i would also honor since he is um both my antagonist in two different forms and my son uh so i wanted to Pay homage to my my awesome son and wear his time shirt. <laughs> true. How many people can say that? Yeah, I mean, my antagonist and my son. Full <laughs> so, <well>, circle. <laughs> Kenneth, you're wearing a be kind little, shirt. A little um, trivia for you. Mary and I are so close that. She has even wiped my butt. This is, this is wow. <laughs> yeah. I'm keeping it real. We're keeping it real here. <laughs> we call the brown badge. Yes. Um, you know, with my illness, I have, uh, have caregivers that have to take care of me. And when I was on my way to the cruise, Mary was my caregiver, oh. and I had to go to the bathroom before the flight. Oh, and poor Mary, but she was so wonderful, and I God bless her. She is, she is my, she is my everything. I I really appreciate her so much. Thank you for saying that. And now she has her brown badge. <laughs> yes, <laughs> my brown badge, and yeah, it's been such a, you know, I've been so grateful that I, particularly on the cruise, uh, got to be there for Ken, that we traveled together. And we've, yeah, we've been, we've been through the trenches together from the get go. So <laughs> it wasn't too much of a switch to, to just be, continue to be there for him in any and all capacities. So it's my honor, my Klingon honor to have no a <laughs> Nothing, nothing mm -hmm. like a mother's love, you know? Yes. yes. Exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. exactly. The first thing get to do, because the sad thing is that she only got to be with Tanavik for that tiny little period of time. Yeah, we, we were making up for lost time. Yep. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <Time>. <laughs> uh, and Kenneth, you're wearing your uh, Be Kind shirt, right? Yeah, yes. Nice. My, with my signature on it. The, there we go. Oh, <laughs> didn't know that. Oh, yeah. It's a wonderful charity that's um, headed up by Raymond and Chase and um, the Pop Culture Coalition, and they help raise money to uh, for anti-bullying for youth, and um, I'm really proud of them for the work they've done, and they, it was wonderful to collaborate with them on a new shirt to help raise some some funds for that charity. So I really appreciate uh, being a part of that experience. Mm -hmm. um, if you're looking for a link, you can always go to my Instagram and check out my bio and, and get a link and, and grab one of these uh, T-shirts. 
Great. We'll also include that in the uh, description box below. Um, we've got some charities uh, that Mary sent us as well. And we've got the ALS uh, website there. And uh, we'll add that in. I'll get that from you. Yeah. Um, Scott Jensen, I think he's referencing your story, says, <laughs> Ken, Ken is real as hell. You're going to put me on a panel. There's going to be something like that. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I love how his story started off with, with poop and then like a really sweet story about how much he cares about Mary and then right back to brown bag. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like it's it, that, that's part of the fun. That's that's the, what I enjoy the most about our friendship. No. <laughs> but it is true. The, the, the way in which we're able to be extremely goofy and then extremely serious or extremely sentimental within minutes is uh, one of the most fun, exciting aspects of, of just our friendship is just it's it's i we can be totally ourselves with each other which is the dream with any with any relationship is that you know and i i, I you know just talking about i'm sure we'll talk more about all our various adventures throughout the years as klingons but um i always felt that we could um there would be days where one or both of us was stressed about something but it often was enough that like on the days that Ken really needed someone to be like, it's fine, I could be there. But then the other days I'd be texting him like, what am I supposed to do? And then some days we're like, okay, we're gonna team together. But I always found that the dynamic always worked out pretty well, that one person was feeling more sane than the other on any given day. <laughs> were you guys ever in the makeup chair together or were you, do, since you're working separate days, a lot of times that they had you staggered? Yeah, it's a good question. Well, I think early on, we were always working with each other. Um, yeah, we were in the makeup chair together. Uh, Hugo was the one that did my makeup for Cole and Cole Shaw. And Mary had James. Um, both of them were, what, seven anytime award winners. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I think they're hopefully going to be up for another one for Bacard. Mm -hmm. um, Hugo is still on Discovery, but those guys are unbelievable. What they do. Yeah. We, uh, we logged a lot of hours with those guys. Yeah. We uh, mm -hmm. love them dearly. Yeah. They have to be there, you know, before we are to set everything up, and then they put everything on us, and then they have to be there all the hours we're there to make sure that our faces aren't falling off or, but I, you know, it's actually a, a really fun Hugo story was in the second season um, wet for point of light. And we had done the fight sequence all day on the last day of filming. And as a consequence, my face, the bottom half of my face was really starting to fall off. <laughs> and like, it was just squish, squish, squish. It was not unusual, but you know, it was so much that he really felt that there needed to be an adjustment. And he went full MacGyver. I remember, I don't know if you witnessed the whole thing, Ken, but he literally took me to like the side studio and was like, okay, we've got five minutes. Went to costumes. He's like, you guys have zip ties, right? And they're like, yeah. He's like, get me three zip ties. And then he literally, because I had the hair, thankfully, was able to cut a hole in the back of my neck um, and zip tie it. So he gave me basically like a facelift for the <laughs> last few scenes because he was close up. Um, and he wanted my face to be as, as tight as possible. But it was amazing. He did it in five minutes, pulled it all together, and the costume, you know, team. It was just such a great group effort. But you know, that's just one of a million examples of both Hugo James and, and Rocky, that their whole team, they, they just they want it to look as as good as it does. So they really did. But in answering your question, yeah, I feel like near the beginning episode four was our first time interacting as characters and that we were pretty much uh in the same scenes um together so i remember that and i remember before we were in the prosthetic trailer the first time shazad and ken and i um ran lines together we were at shazad's apartment and i hadn't heard uh ken speak his klingon at all like what his voice was who cole was and he, you know, it's a very different voice from Ken's. And I remember just being like, whoa! This is so <laughs> yeah, that, was, um, that was a really special time when we very first started delivering our Klingon together. It really was like a, 
like an opera. Yeah. You know, we, we didn't fully understand what everyone was saying, but the emotions and the intent were behind it. And for some reason, it just started to feel magical and, and flow together. And um, it was really special that, that first time. Yeah. Right, because you guys obviously knew what lines you were saying, but did they tell you what the other lines were? Did they just kind of give you a brief synopsis of <laughs> what those lines were? Um, well, we would get um, back, back translations of the full Klingon scenes. So, and we would have time, and certainly with episode four, we had a fair amount of time to prep before the episode. And we worked with Rhea Nolan, our dialect coach specifically, Robin Stewart, our translator would translate it, but then, um, Rhea was really the liaison between the words and our delivery. And I remember drilling it. We would have like two hour sessions drilling it together. And I have a very different technique than Ken does. I'm very like, I like to go sentence by sentence, word for word. I mean, Ken does it in his own way, but um, that's how I would drill it with Rhea. But then once we were all in Toronto, then we kind of did a mixture. I remember like that we went to Shazad's and we would do kind of the literal back translation English. So we would all get a sense of like, oh, right, that word is kind of hitting that. Um, that's what Ken's really, like that's a moment that he's really hitting. Then we would do it fully in Klingon, fully in English, as is was in the original English script. Like we really just played around until we felt we had a sense of like the general emotional arc so that we could play more on set on the day. But there was no way we were gonna get to that if we didn't take those extra hours. And I'm so grateful to Ken and Shazad um, who always, you know, showed up to do those extra sessions that, you know, we just did it because we wanted to do good work. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, Chaos Aria misspelled K-less. <laughs> <laughs> Sentiments are good there still. Oh, yes. Oh, were you able to, do you know what this means? Kapa, we know what, I can't even say. Oh, uh, Klingon mach. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. We are Klingons. It's like success. We are Klingons. Got it. <laughs> nice. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Impressive. <laughs> It was a bat lift drop. You know, I, yeah, I think people out there should know that, uh, you know, that you guys are just, you know, Mary and, and Ken are some of the nicest people that I've ever met. And, um, you know. No. StreamYard oh, doesn't. Oh, so nice. <laughs> right now, as soon as you say something nice. <laughs> Sabotage. Oh, there he is. He disappeared on my screen. Let me hang on one second. Oh. Let me bring him back. Oh. Go. Sarag loves us so much that he disappeared. <laughs> it's that level. That level. Uh, well, while he's uh, recalibrating the power <laughs> couplings, uh, Tamia Harper says, Yay, thank you all so much for being here. Um, Really, a lot of people have been saying how much they appreciate you guys coming in. Uh, Kenneth, I know it's not always easy or ever easy, so we really appreciate your time. Mary, you've Thank dedicated you. extra time to us and, and kind of putting together a couple extra things for us. So we really appreciate the effort both of you have given us, like above and beyond. Guys, yeah, so everybody at home, no, these guys aren't just showing up all like grumpy, fine, I'll do it. They're like, as Starok was saying, they're two of the nicest, warmest, most supportive people of the fan base. Like you guys have been so good to the Star Trek fan base. And I really hope that the Star Trek fan base has been good to you in turn. Yes. Well, thank you for saying that. And it really is, I know, my pleasure and particularly being here. Uh, with Ken is such a joy. Um, but yeah, the, I, the community is amazing. I mean, at this point, that's that's what gets me to, to, to show up is I've had so many incredible experiences in person and online with this community that um, that's that's the motivation for, for st sticking to it is uh, okay. I, I, I want to be able to pay back that joy in any way I can. 
Mm. Uh, somebody with eagle eyes, Kristen <laughs> Mackey says, Kenneth has a bat left in the background too. Uh, yeah. Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and a T Rex, my son also loves uh, yeah. Jurassic World, Jurassic Park. Oh, cool. Where did and you get the? There's a uh, on a, my mantle is um, a Klingon ship. Oh, oh wow, a cruiser. Oh. Oh, a cruiser. Yeah. or a warbird. Where did you get the bat left? A uh, good question. We when we. First, we're on the. Uh, we were still in the first season of the show. There was a Christmas party um, at Star Trek licensing that John Van Sitters invited us right. to. Mary, myself, and Mary Wiseman and my wife Susan went. And um, during the time we were there, they had this amazing room where they have all the, this wonderful um, licensed products and we got to go in there and select a few things and one of the things that i took home was the the ballet wow and my yeah. son plays with it all the time <laughs> yeah. yeah you just kind of take whatever you want it's kind of like yeah <laughs> it was, it was oh, like it uh, yeah. I got a Klingon robe. I got a couple of tribbles <laughs> and a couple of Klingon books. Oh, and some Klingon beer. The oh, ice. yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Warnog? I scored. I think, yeah, I think it was, yeah, the Warnog. I'm not a beer drinker, and I, like, took a respectful sip, and I was like, wonderful. <laughs> 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 the it is the honorable oh. thing to do yes very honorable um but it is amazing i mean the fact that there are actual you know klingon klingon beers and all that i mean all of that stuff is just amazing and that was i was gonna say it was like christmas but it literally was the christmas party oh. um because yeah they had all of these these extra things that we could grab and um i also got a batleth um and a few other i was oh yeah i got a fun number one uh number one dad like glass for my dad and i don't know like a yeah a delta mug and various things but that was i, I remember that too because mary wiseman was in town randomly like working or something and she had texted me i think that day and ken and i had already you know we knew we were gonna with, go with susan and all that but then mary was like what are you up to and i was like do you want to go <laughs> to long beach and go to the licensing uh star trek party and she was like yeah i do and we all because it's like an hour drive that was a really fun very special it was, it was awesome i mean yeah they put on a great spread yeah all the desserts and food were all designed in mm -hmm. sort of star trek theme yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean it's a real testament to how wonderful our star trek community is you know who would would think that you'd become close with the uh, Star Trek licensing and all the different mm -hmm. departments, but there's just such wonderful people all across the board. And you get to interact with them all the time at the conventions and, um, and you know, on set and stuff. So my, my hat goes off to the whole community. Mm -hmm. out to John. Yeah. It's, it's, they're amazing. Yeah. So rock, sorry, uh, Garrick popped in with some shenanigans when you're trying to give compliments. <laughs> Would you like to finish what you're saying? Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, they're jamming my signal over there. But, you know, I, I, I wanted to say that um, really awesome people, that meeting you guys was a pleasure and, and a real joy that's, uh, that still continues to this day. You guys are um, some of the most down-to-earth people, and you could tell when you deal with people that are pretentious or, you know, full of themselves. And, and I want people out there to know that you guys are really humble and just awesome people to go out and support and, and, and make sure that you show your love to these people because they deserve it. And they are really talented and just warm-hearted really good people and i'm glad that you're part of the the star trek family because 
we'll be seeing each other for for years to come. Mm -hmm. wow. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Rock. Appreciate it. Yeah. I'd like to take a second. Yeah, Melissa, Melissa was with me actually when I first saw you guys. Uh, when she, you know, yeah. Aaron and Melissa and I, and we were all together. I think it was in London somewhere or in England. Oh yeah, and Birmingham, I think. Yeah, yeah. Destination. yeah. And just yeah. And, yes, and you know, just seeing you guys there, I said, you know, I was just like, those guys are cool. I'd love <laughs> to talk to them. <laughs> it's all, and it's also good to have like a new batch of young energy infused mm -hmm. into the franchise because a lot of the actors were, you know, were, I'm the youngest. So finally seeing people that were my age or younger <laughs> yeah, was, was a great thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> finally. Totally. 25 years later. Yeah. Yeah. yeah finally. Out. Finally. So I've been waiting, I've been waiting and praying for you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so I, I saw you, it was like, who is this guy with the cool hat? <laughs> and the kicks. I, I like this guy. I want to get to know him. And, and when I did finally get to talk to you, you were even cooler and nicer than you looked, man. So oh, I appreciate all, all the love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you say the same thing about the guy with the uh, with the flannel and the beanie and the gloves on? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's an Aaron Eisberg reference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. He was he was happy to have new people to play with. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that you all were so receptive to his energy. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, energy recognizes energy. I feel like that's yeah. very true. Part of why Ken and I came together when we did like from meeting each other on set. And then it was like, oh, this is the word. The, we're these types of people. Great. Good. Another yeah. another one. Ha ha. <laughs> um, and I did want to say, too, like I was during that year, that was our first real convention year. Um, and it was the 25th anniversary for Deep yeah. State Nine. And I'm a real deep space nine lover so i was just geeking out all over the place i was just seeing all you guys like hey like <laughs> i mean they're really cool um so it was like a triple thrill because like you said like to be like you know actors that i had admired on screen uh and stories i had loved and then to realize you know of a, were of a similar energy and passion was was really a thrill yeah. Did you guys get a, ever get a chance to meet uh, JG and Rob, uh, Bob O'Reilly? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we've, had a, we've had definitely a lot of interactions with Bob. I've, I've met JG, um, but I'm hoping uh, to connect with him more. Uh, I know that we, I think there's like a chancellor talk in our future. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Good. Uh, and I do. I, I love Mark. Talk. He was definitely, there was a lot of his story that, different from Laurel's, but it's certainly in ascending to power. Uh, mm -hmm. There was a lot I took from what he did and his performance. But yeah, both of them are just so lovely. Bob actually at that Birmingham convention, right? He he crashed our, we had our duo panel and he came on in full regalia. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he, wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He's always yeah, great. Those guys have such uh, great spirits and they've been very welcoming of the of the new Klingons and the new cast, so it, it feels great. Yeah. You're part yeah. of that Klingon. Yeah, I went, I, I went out drinking with them one time at a convention, uh, and it was a Klingon drinking party. Oh, man. And All parties are Klingon <laughs> drinking parties. <laughs> It was about as rowdy a party I've been to at a convention, so. That tracks, for sure. Yeah. Uh, also, quick shout out, uh, Rex A. Wood, who's one of our associate producers on The Seventh Rule. He says, Ken, you are amazing. Your courage. This is from a veteran who's also a double amputee calling you courageous. So that's high praise there. Thank you, Rex. I feel your love and support. Thank you. That uh, means a lot. Mm. Megan Miller says, yeah. it was a pleasure meeting y'all on the cruise. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and I love that you used y'all. We love y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I think that 
we were on that cruise in March. Like, what a great experience. And uh, and to think a couple weeks later, we're in isolation in our homes. Uh, we're really, you know, blessed to be able to have that experience. Yeah. While we did and yeah. truthfully come out of it healthy. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, very, very grateful. A uh, quick mention for Heidi Border. She says, hate to mention it, but I'm going through a really rough time right now. This series, VTC, Virtual TrekCon, is helping me escape. Oh. You guys know any, I don't know if there are any nice words in Klingon, but if there are any, please. is good. And katlo, which is thank you, which we rarely mm. say. I only said it once to Vogue when we were flirting. That's the only time I think it might have been ever said. <laughs> I don't know. Ken, Ken, can you think of anything? Well, oh. this might be a time to not necessarily speak Klingon, but just to uh, say live long and prosper. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, yeah, and I think I think I think we all have gone through things that you know make us stressed and and feel a certain type of way and the the key is to know that those times don't last and good things are on the horizon um so we, we we're going to pray for you making mm -hmm. it through your your journey mm -hmm. nice. Very uh billy chung you already read ahead uh mary i saw as soon as i put it on you smiled you read ahead chancellor con and you you're taking your sip and you're like "Ooh, i like that idea <laughs> well, that let's, would be let's, do, uh, let's do a survey then for everyone that's watching when when we're in our prosthetics it's incredibly hot and sweaty and when they take the off the prosthetics, there's so much sweat that comes pouring out. And they often describe it like hot dog water. Yep. <laughs> my, and my question to you is, if you had to boil a hot dog in cold sweat or merry sweat, who would you boil a hot dog in? <laughs> oh my nice. gosh! That's for the three of them. To answer. <laughs> that's the first. Is that's that... the first question ever. The first time that question has ever been asked. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> oh man! That's a that's a throwback to the person that said Ken is real as hell. Yeah. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Stakes. On the it, it, it brings a whole new meaning to the term "dirty water dog." Oh, okay. <laughs> oh god! Yeah. Oh my yeah. god! I didn't yeah. eat those either. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I'm. I'm going. I'm going vegan on that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Fully support. As we yes. Do. Fully support it. Vegan dogs are delicious. They are. I think. I think uh, everyone <laughs> after that question is going to become vegan. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Right. <laughs> Making the world a better place. Yeah. Yeah, a hot dog will never be the same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That is that is like yeah, James McKinnon. That is his like coined term. Up, oh, hot dog water. And some days are oh. worse than others, usually obviously the longer 18 hour days. Um and my my worst hot dog water day. I love that. <laughs> was actually at point of light that final week of filming we had i think three days of, of filming that week or or two and i woke up that monday with a sinus infection and i was like no 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 and i remember texting ken and being like i don't know da, da, and like got like bunches of spicy food from various restaurants and just like tried to clear it out but i was still not 100 percent by that wednesday when we filmed and uh we made it through uh it was a lot of you know, fun Hugo having to help me blow my nose and all that, like with the with the prosthetics, all really good stuff. But at the end of the day, I remember them cutting through and it just like <laughs> gushed out because I 
and I just spilled. Uh, oh no! In real time, that's basically what what happened. Oh my god, this is hilarious. All right, y'all. You keep can talking. take a minute. I'm gonna Go ahead, get take a minute. Yeah. This is great. And Mercury's <laughs> out of retrograde. It's just it's just me. <laughs> so we can now reflect on hot dog water for a few moments here and just really soak that up, I guess. Um, Ken, <laughs> do you remember a moment that was actually like the first time they took off all these huge prosthetics and after having them on for hours, does it just feel like the most incredible feeling or is it, or, or is it one of those things where you feel like it's still there for a minute, you know? No, it's the moment that last piece of blue peels off your face. It's just pure bliss. But then it gets better when they bring the hot towel. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you guys, when they put that hot towel on your face, I mean, I've never done heroin, but I know <laughs> that it feels like that. I mean, it's just pure bliss. You're just sitting there. It's like an outer body experience when that hot towel goes on your face. Um, and it's really <laughs> part of the reward of enduring the prosthetics for such a long period of time. Mm. Uh, you get a little bit of a, a spa at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. I always say, yeah, weirdest spa day ever. <laughs> Everything good, Mary? Sandy I'm, says you're cut off. You're cut off. <laughs> I'm, I'm, if you can hear me, I'm, like, I'm great. It's great. No, it's all cleaned up. It's a little sticky, but we're great. Uh, oh, this is somebody from the cruise. Uh, Andy says, Miss Ken and Mary from the cruise, Melissa and Sirac, we oh, hope yeah. you join us on the cruise soon, wow. like next week, even regardless <laughs> of whether there's a cruise or not. <laughs> yeah, good to hear from you, Andy. We've we've had a few fun run-ins. Yeah, I was worried about you guys on the cruise. I think Nana was on there too. Yeah, it's and I was just worried because it was so much going on. Find Mary. <laughs> that was when you were gone for a second. I guess. <laughs> I'm glad everyone was so concerned. <laughs> She was I mean, only gone for like 30 seconds. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> My reputation precedes me. What? I don't know if that works. Kirsten Mackey says, Kenneth is too funny. He paints pictures with words just so well. Is that something <laughs> you kind of always had, Ken? Or have you developed <laughs> this wordsmithing at a later age? Uh, no. I'm, I'm, no. I, I really enjoy that comment makes me sound like I'm some sort of poet, but um, I really I, I really enjoyed doing these uh, conventions and panels because they give you an opportunity to be a goofball for you know a good hour or two mm -hmm. and, uh, and then also share some stories and, and insight. You know, it's all about a balance, but I don't mind being a, a bit of a goofball for a while and uh, try to get a few laughs. Yeah. Yeah. It's always, yeah. it's always, it's always a treat to be on a panel with Ken. I never know what, what <laughs> funny anecdote or wordsmith. It's always a good surprise. Um, yeah, it really. And I'm so grateful that we've been able to do so many together because even though I, I can I can think I know where it's headed and then <laughs> <laughs> and it goes a totally different direction. Excellent. About or whatever. Yeah, whatever it may be. Whoops. Try to be classy. Melissa, you're actually rewatching <laughs> Discovery right now, right? Uh yeah, I started rewatching it um just recently. You were saying that the uh, the Klingon scenes really stand out to you. We were talking about it just like today. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just earlier. Um, no, I, I'm just really impressed by all of the Klingon language. I'm impressed that there is a whole language that is um, 
that is made up, you know, <laughs> it's, 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 uh, it's unique to Star Trek and, and the commitment is, you can see the commitment that you both made in, well, all of the Klingons made in learning the language and embodying the Klingons and, and, um, and I, yeah, I really enjoy the Klingon scenes. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, thank you. Uh, all of, always, is, uh, as you guys know, it's a team effort. You know, it's not just coming from us. There's right. a whole team of people that, that uh, work together to, to pull this off from costumes, the, the set, and props, and we have a linguist, and, and, um, and Rhea is our or uh, help me out here, Mary. What's the word uh, I'm looking for? A dialect coach. Dialect coach, yeah. Mm. And so, you know, we couldn't have pulled it off without the whole team. So we're really, guys, uh, you know, grateful for that experience. Mm -hmm. Very quickly, Commander Saru has something to say to you guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love you, my Kay and my Mary. <laughs> uh, Huggles. Douglas of Huggles. Douglas of Huggles. <laughs> yeah, I mean, speaking of nice people, yeah, they don't, they don't come any nicer than than Doug Jones. He mm -hmm. uh, epitomizes the 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 you know identity of of love and. Mm -hmm. And hugs and and kindness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's one of a kind, and I'm really uh, blessed to be able to be his friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I second all of that, and uh, also just you know, for us getting to speak with Doug Jones about prosthetics, my God, like, even if I wasn't doing prosthetics, it would be an honor and to, to be able to do it. And, and, uh, I, one of my favorite, uh, moments was at the first table read, it was my first time meeting him. And I was like, yeah, it's my first time doing prosthetics. And he said, Oh, precious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, uh, but you know, there was, uh, you know, I, I, asked if we could get coffee at one point and you know he's just been so um open and kind and and uh supportive of of all of us of figuring it out um and just to get to watch his work uh, on the show and behind the scenes is just such a gift so love you dougie <laughs> yeah doug's one of the most wonderful humans in the world i do feel bad though because i had a friend uh, for like the first 10 years of living in LA, where I'd be like, this guy is the nicest guy I've met in LA. And then I met J Doug and I was like, dude, I, I have bad news. You're no longer. He's like, he's like, that's okay, man. I get it. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> nah, he's a wonderful. Yeah. Guy. Yeah. Doug sets that bar really high. Very high. <laughs> as far as nice guys go. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Sorry, man. <laughs> there was a uh, another okay I, I don't does this even warrant a, an answer <laughs> can we get a hot dog sweat and heroin hot towels cling on t-shirt as con merch <laughs> <laughs> no Scott, i would have let you answer that one <laughs> uh, I maybe we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see if the demand is high enough. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys get? Do you guys get recognized a lot um, on the street by fans? Do they approach you and say, "Oh my God"? I. Uh... Not so much in in LA. I mean. Yeah. We do obviously at the conventions when it's, but you know, we're covered in prosthetics and I, I get recognized more for other shows, not not necessarily for, for Star Trek, uh, mm -hmm. but I love interacting with the fans and I've always uh, appreciate the, the love and support. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's also been great 
being on a show like this in the world of social media. Because mm. before, and when even with Ciroc, when you were working, there wasn't really that same platform and interaction mm. with fans. So it's a whole different uh, element to the relationship and the community. And you know, in a wonderful way, it can be a real wonderful tool. And um, to be able to interact with them and see the fan art and the responses mm. in, in a very quick time has, has been uh, really wonderful. And I love the engagement. And for me personally, with my struggles, with my illness, it's been really important in, um, you know, and helping me along and, and making me feel supported and loved. So I've always uh, appreciated that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, the I just agree that the, the social interaction um, online just contributes to uh, the in-person interactions because I've had so many instances where, um, yeah, I mean, Steffi being one shiny example of an of artist online who created work that I loved and we communicated online until we met at a convention. And then we've continued to build that relationship um, over the years. And there have been so many, you know, culminations of moments of positive interactions online that then I'm that person that posted that thing when they come to my booth or whatever. And I'm like, oh, yeah. And uh, I've had a few instances because I'm a real deep diver. Like, I'll find the videos talking about Laurel or whatever. So um, I've had a few instances like uh, Jesse Gender, who I actually just was in one of her new videos about Trek. Um, uh, I had seen the video she had made about Laurel and we met in person at a play reading and I recognized her and she's like, what? <laughs> and uh, it's, like moments like that are just so delightful because I am a geek myself and being able to share that passion uh, with the fans is just so thrilling. Um, and I will say though, in recognition, I've had a, like a handful of like, I say like coffee shop recognition moments that like blow my mind. Like the people clearly like follow me on social media because I don't know how else they would. But I, one of my favorites was right after the finale of season two, um, I was at coffee shop and the barista was like, did you just, did you just help like save all sentient life in the galaxy? <laughs> like, and I was like, I did, I did do that. You're the chancellor. And I was like, I am the chancellor. <laughs> And it was so neat. And I just like, and it was a, it wasn't like, it was like a eh, day. Like I was kind of like needing that coffee. And so it just brightened my whole, whole day. And it was so lovely. So I've had a handful of moments like that, which are really lovely because they really take my surprise. Bless you, sir. Or Kalish. Kalish, bless you. No. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I oh. thought you were going to say your coffee shop encounters were like the Starbucks at Star Trek Las Vegas or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah. You get a lot of those. Yes, that's definitely true. Oh, <laughs> uh, love from Dougie. Uh, also, quick word about Doug. He will be on the Discovery panel uh, with uh, a few other castmates, Raven, uh, David, and who's the other one? Hannah uh, Spear, Hannah right? Spear, His exactly. Sister. Serana Yay. plays a sister, right? So they're going to be on Sunday. So check that out, everybody. Um, and That's Doug, a great group. Yay. And when we read his thing, we read it in his voice, don't we? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> There's love. Uh, very quickly, Melissa, Joe Colton says we need to get uh, you in a Klingon costume. Okay. Yes. <laughs> we got to figure that out. Yeah. yeah. You were just like, it doesn't sound great. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> that is a good question. What is your favorite Klingon word to say? Uh, I had a word in, um, in the, my first appearance on episode two. And I think in the edits, it kind of got faded out. But um, originally, all the Klingons uh, holograms were talking and arguing. And I was in the forefront, and I got to turn around and say, <laughs> which means shut up. 
Nice. <laughs> I always, always love that. And then what was the other one, Mary? Uh, food is uh, oh, yeah. so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was, yeah. We had to, because that, that uh, scene where Voke and I come back to the ship and uh, Cole has like gotten everyone's um, trust or, you know, alliance by bringing them food. And we every time we'd walk up and Ken had to do it so many times where we would turn around and go, so much. <laughs> <laughs> I remember just being like, oh man, it's a classic. It's a classic. Oh. Yeah. Um, there's a curse nice. word I learned. Um Kultvak. I I just saw my spit there. Mary <laughs> <laughs> you, you gotta spit a little bit when you speak yeah. Klingon, right? There's a little spitting involved. It's true. It's, it's kind of part of the part of the job description. But yeah, that's a fun one. Um, and then I actually what does that word mean? I they don't say it. It's it's like the worst curse word. So I'm assuming okay. I, I I I won't say it because I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> but I remember looking at it. I was like, that's fun. I just love the anytime that big Q is around. It's like you know you're in for a good time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, and, um, yeah, and a lot of spit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Chris Hurt says, "I was also very impressed with how much work they put into the Klingon language creation. How well the actors portrayed their characters. You guys had a ton of prep, right? Kenneth was telling us like weeks in advance. At least for him, I mean, whether it's whether it's learning the entire language ahead of time or trying to, or just the hours that you spent before every day shooting, you guys just put a ton of prep into it, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, the idea, like I said, episode four, I feel like was maybe the most, for the amount of language, and uh, we had the most amount of prep before that episode, because we were not in the third episode. So there was a little bit more of a um, space. But um unfortunately there were also times where uh we would have loved uh three weeks of prep and we had three days um <laughs> and that's why we're so close yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there were times where they you know the, with the writing you just couldn't avoid yeah the rewrites and unfortunately with the klingon language you change one word in english and it just messes up the whole sentence that you memorized in Klingon and you're basically off to start again. But there were a, a few episodes or scenes where, um, you know, not to give too much of the magic away, but we had to read off a of cue cards because we just didn't get the material in time. But even with the cue cards, you have to, you know, I'm still, I still feel proud of the fact that we got to a point where we were able to read Klingon phonetically. Yeah. And at yeah. a pace where we could look mm -hmm. at it on the cue card and make it sound naturalistic. Yeah. So, you know, it still was challenging, especially when the cue cards are so small and we have contacts in. And the other elements when you're tired, it's you know working for 15 hours in prosthetics and you still need to deliver that close up. Um, but you know, we we got it done and and we were motivated and inspired to, to always do the best job we could because you know, Star Trek is important and we just wanted to justice as much as we could yeah yeah that um particular episode the episode eight where we had cole and laurel had two very big interactions on the sarcophagus ship that was the one where we really had to um get it together within a uh within a few days but i will say that but another funny part was that when we were when the camera wasn't on us we couldn't have the cue cards because they would be in the shot. So we had to semi improvise. Like I, we were pretty solid in, in, in knowing it. I, I was still very impressed with both of us, the way in which we were able to know most of it by that day. 
Um, but there were a few moments where it was more important to keep the rhythm of the scene. So we knew that. So there were a few times where I would just be like, wow, moop, meh, what's up? Wow, cause samba zumba ke. And then like, and then like, but it was like the right, like I knew it was that a length of time that Ken could have that rhythm of what I was emotionally giving to him. And uh, it was uh, quite an experience, but we really did. And that was, I always talk about this day because we went until 6 a.m. Uh, it was a frater day as we wow. and uh, it's the whole where Cole uh, puts the paint on my face and uh, all that. And so that was like right near the end, the whole paint uh, stuff. And I exactly, you're so tired and your brain is fried, but Rhea, bless her, is there to shout the Klingon if we need it. And, um, but we did it. And uh, I, that was, you know, we were, we had bonded in episode four, but to me, that was like such a big moment in just both as, as actors and as, as friends that we were like, mm. okay, this person's gonna, gonna pull it out. Cause we care. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, it kind of, you know, and that was, I guess, I can't even remember what that must've been during the summer. Cause that was, was that before we went to Vegas? It was, that first like, time. it was extra hot. Like it was really yes. hot. Right. On top of everything. <laughs> but yeah, I think that that was kind of, it was like we had done this really intense episode together and then we started helping to promote the show. And it was all kind of this, because the show was airing, started airing as we were still filming. Like it was such an interesting circumstance with that first season that it was, everything was like one thing on top of the other that we were getting to know the show as it was being promoted, as it was starting to air, as we were still filming. And yeah, it's pretty, pretty wild. Saturday, I like that one. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds terrible. Uh, we got just a couple minutes left, uh, but very quickly, we've got an amendment. Uh, Scott Jensen reminds us that's Captain Saru. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're hoping so. You know, we, yeah. we love Saru. We love Doug. Uh, we covered that. And the other one was, uh, Mary, please tell everyone how Doug helped you at the start of Discovery. Hmm. Um, well, <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, just in, in all the ways, I mean, a, a, the simplest thing of like, if he was in the trailer when, when I was getting made up, just, he would always come over and be like, check in, how you doing? When I was getting my full body, um, prosthetic that one day, he was like, Oh, I've been there, you know, <laughs> like, um, <very laughs> supportive. um, but we did, I, I know that we had more than one coffee date, but I, there's one very distinctly in my mind pretty early on where uh, we went, you know, got some coffee, walked around uh, downtown Toronto and um, I picked his brain about his past experiences and asked about his longest time in the makeup chair and um, which I believe was 11 hours uh, before. Wow. Um, wow. Just getting ready for the Oscars. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> Um, but just, just so lovely and just talking to, I mean, uh, it's, I think, you know, we've all made that clear that that's so who, who Doug is, but his, his appreciation of the, um, of the storytelling and of the character. And that was, I think a big, um, it, it wasn't so much a question cause that was definitely my intent. And I know Ken's as well is like, you want to, it's not this like other creature that you're distanced from. It's like about making sure it's so filled with your personal whatever acting work you need to do to make it deeply emotional and personal for you um because then you're having to push it through so much more than you would with mm. just just your human face and that's something that doug definitely brings to all of his roles is that deep spiritual connection to who the character is um and you see it um in all of them so that was a, a big part of our conversation as well was just like that it's there's no superficial quality it, you have to actually have to be m not i don't want to say more authentic i don't want to compare it's apples and oranges but that you there's a certain level of authenticity that must be there um and i found too for me because my eyes were one of the biggest windows in for laurel um that if my eyes you could tell if i was lying <laughs> So I had to be 100% authentic in, in my experience as the character. And I think we bond bonded over the fact that I definitely love extreme characters um, mm -hmm. and getting to transform 
Um, but I'm also a total goofball in real life. So um, that was also because Doug is this wonderful, buoyant human. So I think we identified with having to do some tough characters, which he gets to be um, close to himself in a lovely way as Saru. Um, but definitely in the past has played some pretty intense creatures. So those are a few. Yeah. Mm. Or it says your mother wears combat boots is actually a compliment in Klingon. That that tracks. <laughs> and I do. <laughs> mother definitely wears a lot of combat boots. Not in the past <laughs> few months. They're just sitting there in my closet like, Eesh. but I do love my big boots. <laughs> well, I think that's about all the time we have. Um, wow. We really appreciate you guys joining us unless you want to stick around for one more question <laughs> i mean i don't know <laughs> I, I i love these things so much it's just so it's just getting to hang out with friends and talk about wonderful experiences so it's always somebody else said in the comments uh that you were a goofball when you said it too but i think I think it's definitely the both of you. That easily. No, no, no. Yes. I, well, I would get in trouble on set, particularly in Point of Light, because Ken and Shazad are the biggest goofballs and would do everything <laughs> to make me laugh. Ken is also being like this. He was what was it like, evil Santa? And he'd be like, "What do you want for Christmas, little boy?" And like. <laughs> Just the silliest, silliest thing. So yes, absolutely. I'm so grateful for that. That was a real great contrast in the intensity of what we were dealing with in the plot and then just being able to laugh even though I was getting in trouble. <laughs> uh, well, on our way out, a couple of people are saying thank you to you. Hello. Thank you, really, pan panel. You're amazing, Kappa. This was nice. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kenneth, for wearing the Be Kind t-shirt. It's a good mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Love you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Look at this love. There's too much of it. There's Never so too much. much. Never too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Muhammad Noor was in the panel Yay. right And uh, Doctor. Doctor. Yeah. <laughs> I, no, I think it. it's Can awesome, we... Mary. Too. I was I was pleasantly surprised. I said, "Wow, she's so beautiful," and you know, it, you can't tell how beautiful you are when you see you and all that makeup. But then when I saw you in person, I said, "Wow, she's a very beautiful woman." Aww. So well, thank pleasant you. surprise. Thank you. Yeah, Laurel is it's <laughs> it's beautiful in her own right in a very Klingon way. Um, but yeah, it's it's fun to have that that contrast, and I do I like. I like being all, all different sides of myself. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I was noticing how beautiful Lorel actually is. Mm -hmm. And and that really comes through her eyes, as you said. And yeah, nice work Thanks. in that. Yes. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, Cole is beautiful, too. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of Cole course. Is Cole, okay. is hot. Cole well, is hot, and so is Tanaka. Cole's hot is, he's a little, but, yeah. yeah. I, there's some handsome, you know, and I remember, too, when Tanavik was in, when that episode came out, I remember a lot of people being like, why am I so attracted to this Klingon? Like, I remember that, like, <laughs> when, like, on, or, like why, am I, why am I hot for Tanavik? Like, it's a whole, I, I'm, I think you saw that, but it was, I was, I was a proud mama. I was like, yeah, that's right. That's right. I have a very hot <laughs> yeah, Some good genes. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Oh, lots Great. Of oh, thanks thank for all you. the love thank and thanks. Guys, right. It's going to keep going. <laughs> oh, Marie. oh, so many lovely you know, people. Such a great yeah. Anne Marie says, I love. <laughs> <laughs> Anne Marie. I love Anne Marie. Welcome to the Call Me Seven O's. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, too, Anne Marie. Hmm? All right, everybody. We better run. Uh, 
but we really appreciate it. Uh, mm -hmm. We really appreciate everybody tuning in to say nice things as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys, like I said, you go above and beyond for us and for the fans. And the fans totally love you and totally appreciate you more for who you are than even what you did on set. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> And everybody at home, please check the description box below to get uh, some information on the charities uh, from, from Mary and Kenneth and uh, take care of each other and send Kenneth a load of love. I censored myself there. Just send him a ton of love, everybody. Right? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you all very much. We'll I'll see you on the next. Sorry, say that again, Kenneth. I'll keep fighting for everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I want our prayers are with you, man. We want you to be uh, strong and healthy as long as as long as you can, man. Mm -hmm. And we're we're here in fighting with you. We're in your corner, man. People love yes. you. We love you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I want to stick around. Yes. Thank you. Keep smiling on us. He's got a warrior's mm -hmm. heart. Yes, this is it's true. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. This was awesome. Yeah. All right, everybody. We'll see you soon. We'll see you on the next one. Uh, stay tuned yeah. for the next video. You can find it at the very top of the description box, which is right below <laughs> this video. Right below the video, you'll see a little link. You'll hop over to the next <laughs> one. And Kenneth is dancing. <laughs> dancing. He's like, are you guys still here? What's going on? <laughs> nice. He's doing right. donuts. Yeah, yeah. Donuts. All right. See you later, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys.